folks, I want to take a minute to do three problems from section 2.7 because this might look slightly different from the way that we did it in class and I want you to see how to address the homework the way Peterson asked the questions. Um, on the test, it's going to be just like we did it in class, and the outcome is the same as what we do in class. It's the getting there that's different. So I just really want you to see this. So we have a quadratic inequality. You'll see 7x is less than or equal to 15 minus 2x squared. Now remember the first step, no matter what type of problem they give you, whether it's quadratic, degree 2 like in this case, or it's a higher degree polynomial, or it's a rational fraction inequality, get 0 on one side. Now since the negative, that well the x squared is negative, I want to move that to the left side. So y'all, I'm going to add 2x squared to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. That's going to give me 2x squared, and then plus 7x that's already on the left hand side, it minus 15 is less than or equal to 0. Now you'll recall the next step is to factor. Sometimes they give you problems that are already 0 on one side and already factored on the other. So don't multiply those out, but this one is definitely not factored. If this quadratic doesn't factor, you would also need to use the quadratic formula. Now, I might not factor the same way that you typically do if you use the bottoms up method. You go right ahead. Um, if you do factor by grouping, which is what I'm about to do, then do factor by grouping. But we can multiply this 2 times this negative 15. And I'm looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 30 and also add to be 7. Okay, so when we think about that, that's 10 and 3, right? And it needs to be a positive 10 and a negative 3 to multiply to be a negative 30 and also add to be positive 7. If you use the bottoms up method, you get those same two numbers and then you just carry on with how you normally do it. If you do it by a factor by grouping, you rewrite this middle line, so 2x squared middle term, plus 10x minus 3x minus 15 is less than or equal to 0. And then we need to factor here and factor here. Greatest common factor. Here a 2x comes out and that leaves me with x plus 5. On the left a negative 3 factors out and that also leaves me with x plus 5. And remember the factor by grouping method, that's what you need, is those two sets of parentheses to match. And then times what's left over, 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. So again, if you don't factor that way, hey, that's okay. As long as you get to x plus 5 times 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. What do you do next? This is when you draw your number line. Okay. And then the two places that this is equal to 0, you put on your number line. So you'll, if you'll notice if you set x plus 5 equal to 0, you get x is equal to negative 5, super tiny at the bottom of the screen. And if you set 2x minus 3 equal to 0, you get x is positive 3 halves. So those are the two numbers, negative 5 and positive 3 halves that I need on my number line. Now, since this is a less than or equal to, that means my final answer is going to include negative 5 and include 3 halves. But this is exactly where the homework differs from the way that I do it in class. You see this box here? They want us to set up intervals. And when they ask you to set up these intervals, y'all, you know, they don't want you to include the endpoints because we're not looking at what happens at negative 5 and at 3 halves. So the first interval, this one on the left, we're going from negative infinity to negative 5 with a parenthesis. So again, this parenthesis doesn't have anything to do with our final answer. It's just these intervals. They always want parentheses for the intervals not for the final answer, okay? And then the interval in the middle is from negative 5 to 3 halves. Again, parentheses, and then the interval on the right is from 3 halves to infinity. So those parentheses differ from the way I'm talking about it in class. Now, the final answer is going to be the final answer, but the, they just want the interval always to be in parentheses because we're not worried about what happens at the endpoints. Now, I'm going to test values. So remember, I need to pick something less than negative 5. So negative 6 is what I'm going to use. Something between negative 5 and 3 halves. 0 works. 
and something bigger than three halves, for instance, how about x equals two? Where am I plugging that in? Y'all, I'm a big fan of plugging this into the factored version right here that I've highlighted at the bottom. You could also go to the very original inequality. We're just trying to see if it's true or false. Or, or this one where you got zero on one side. I'm a big fan of the factored version just because the work is faster. Okay, so when you plug negative six, I'm doing negative six plus five times two times negative six minus three. We're checking to see is that really less than or equal to zero. Negative six plus five is negative one. Negative one times two times negative six is negative 12 minus three is negative 15. Is that really less than or equal to zero? And the fact is it's not. 15 is not less than or equal to zero. Now, what they want you to type in is the sign of your answer. 15 is positive and positive is not less than zero. So the word positive would show up right there. Does that make sense? Because you get a positive answer. Now, for space purposes, I'm going to erase this work. If you missed it, just rewind the video, of course. And I'm going to plug in zero now, okay, into the factored one because that just makes it easier, not because that one's required. Really, you can use any of those three lines above. 2 times 0 minus 3, is that less than or equal to 0? Remember, we decided this wasn't because it wasn't positive, okay? Here I've got 5 times negative 3, is that less than or equal to 0? Well, sure it is. Negative 15 is less than or equal to 0. That means that is going to be part of my answer between negative 5 and 3 halves. But they just want to know what the answer to any value between negative five and three halves will give you, well, that's going to give you a negative number. See, this, this is slightly different than the way I've explained it in class and the way the lecture videos explain it, but it's the same idea, I promise. Okay, now let's plug in something bigger than three halves, like two. So I'm going to erase again, get rid of all the scratch work, and plug in positive two. So I've got 2 plus 5, remember I'm plugging into the highlighted factor version down here, times 2 times 2 minus 3, is that less than or equal to 0? Well, 2 times 5 is 7, 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3 is 1. No, it's not, right? 7 is not less than or equal to 0, so I'm not going to shade that in. That's the way I did it in class. They want to know, is this answer positive or negative? And 7 times 1 is positive, right? So I would select positive right there in that chart. Now, the final answer, that's the next thing they would ask if I didn't have this just as a screenshot and I had it actually pulled up in the homework. That's why I didn't type in the answer, is what we did in class. I'm going to type the answer in red. See, it's what we have shaded in. And since it's a less than or equal to, these both of these endpoints are included. So final answer bracket negative 5 to 3 halves. Okay, so why am I showing you this video? Well, because we didn't look at the intervals with parentheses around them all the time. We went ahead and addressed what the endpoint should be. So when you type in, when they use this interval box, use parentheses around the intervals, no matter what the original problem was. And the sign is if your test point answer is positive or if it's negative. And then you compare that to, do you need it to be less than or equal to zero or greater than or equal to zero. I hope that makes sense. This is to get you through the homework. I'm really looking for this final answer, negative five to three halves that we have at the bottom of the screen, no matter if you do it in chart form like they ask it or if you do it with a number line like we did in class. Okay, now the next problem I'm going to show you is just slightly tricky. Okay, so it says solve the polynomial inequality. Notice on this one, they don't give us a chart. And I kind of prefer that because their chart method is a little odd, but it's fine, but it's just different than what we did. So first step is get this equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to move the 3x squared over and we have x to the third minus 3x squared. And notice it's a greater than or equal to here. So now that's greater than or equal to zero. Now this is not a quadratic, so factoring it like you do a quadratic doesn't apply, but it does have a greatest common factor. Let's pull that out. So x squared, uh oh, I was trying to lose my stuff. x squared times x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. 
And remember, you separately set these factors equal to zero. So x squared equals zero just gives me x equals zero. That goes on my number line. And x minus three equal to zero gives me x equals three. That also goes on my number line. So, so far, no tricky, okay? Zero and three, right? Now, if they had given me that interval box, I would be checking from negative infinity to zero with parentheses, zero to three with parentheses, and three to infinity with parentheses. But now we have a greater than or equal to in our problem. So because there's an equal to, I'm gonna fill in my circles here because I know those endpoints should be included in my answer. No matter what my answer is, it's got to include zero and it's got to include three, okay? Now let's pick some test points. So something less than zero, let's go negative one. Something between zero and three, how about positive one? And then something bigger than three, how about four? Okay, now I'm gonna test those. Again, you're, there's three places you could test it. You could go back to the original problem. You could look at the one that's got zero on one side, which I do recommend highly, or the factored one, which is my favorite one to plug it into. Why? Because it makes your work just a little bit faster. I'm highlighting that with super bright pink. There we go. So now let's do the work. So I'm plugging in negative one into the super highlighted pink stuff. So negative one squared times negative one minus three, is that greater than or equal to zero? That's what we're asking ourselves. Is that true or false? So negative one squared is one. Negative one minus three is negative four. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, no, because negative four is greater than or equal to zero is a false statement. No. So I don't shade that part in. Now, if it was one of those box things that we were filling in for them, for the homework, we would put negative in the box because our answer is negative. Okay. When we plug in one, that would be one squared times one minus three. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, let's try. Find out. One squared is one. One minus three is negative two. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Negative two greater than or equal to... No. Again, if they gave us one of those tables to fill in, then this is negative because it's a negative answer. We just know negative anything is not greater than or equal to zero. Okay. And we talked about our intervals often alternate, but not always. And this is one of those case that, cases that it definitely does not alternate. This one's false and this one's false. So let's check the, the interval on the right from three to infinity. If I plug four in there, it's gonna be four squared times four minus three. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, I've got 16 times one. Sure enough, it's positive, right? So if, if I was filling in a table, I would type in positive. What matters to me is that this is true, yes. 16 is greater than or equal to zero. So that means this is my answer over here. Now careful, what is my answer really? Now I'm going to do some erasing. All right, and I'm going to write my interval. Now it looks like it's bracket three to infinity, right? Because that's what I have shaded in. Hey, but don't forget, zero also makes this problem true because that point is included. So this is the tricky part. Zero is also part of that answer. Had this problem been just greater than and not greater than or equal to, only the interval would be my answer with parentheses. But because this says greater than or equal to, I also have to include this zero right here that I just highlighted and doesn't look so good. I hope that makes sense. Let me show you one more problem. Let me try to do this last problem fast. I'm showing you this because it has the table set up again and it's a rational inequality. Okay, so first thing, you have to get zero on one side. Check, we've got that. Next thing, this has to be a single fraction. It is, okay, so we're ready to set the numerator and denominator separately equal to zero. So if I set negative x plus four, equal to zero, then I get x is equal to four. You subtract the four divided by negative one. If I set x minus nine equal to zero, I get x equals nine. So when I drew my number line, those are the values that go on my number line. So I need a four and I need a nine, okay? Now notice this is a greater than or equal to problem. So normally the endpoints would be filled in, right? Filled in, filled in, except here's a problem x can't equal 9. If it comes from a denominator like 9 does, that doesn't need to be a filled in circle. 
that must be an open circle. No matter what the original problem is, y'all, that has to be an open circle. I meant to make that in red, open, okay? Filled in from the numerator because of the equal to and the greater than or equal to, but denominators cannot be equal to zero, so that's why that's open. Now, same story as when we had the box before. All intervals need parentheses when you fill in this chart. So I'm going from negative infinity to four, parentheses. I'm going from four to nine, parentheses, and I'm going from nine to infinity, parentheses. Even though the four can be included in our final answer, but not on those intervals they want you to test, okay? So I'm gonna pick a number less than four, how about three? A number between four and nine, how about five? And a number bigger than nine, how about 10? And I'm just gonna plug them into my original because nothing's factored, right? So negative three plus four over negative three minus nine, is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, you get one over negative 12 and it's not, right? Now, what they want here is that the answer is negative because it's a negative 1 12th. What I want to know, is that true or false? No, negative 1 12 is not greater than or equal to zero, so that's not part of my answer. See what I mean? Now I'm going to plug in 5. So negative 5 plus 4 over negative 5 minus 9, is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, I get negative 1 on top and negative 9 on the bottom. And look, that negative divided by negative is a positive answer. So I would put positive in my interval box there. What I really want to know is that is that greater than or equal to zero? It sure is, right? Positive one ninth is greater than or equal to zero. And finally, let's check 10. Okay, negative 10 plus four on the top and then 10 minus nine in the denominator. Ooh, I made an error. And I did this in class earlier today too. If you, if you were in my lecture class today, you saw me do this. I t I'm plugging in five, y'all. There's a negative in the top, that's negative five plus nine. But in the denominator, that is not a negative. Now, I got lucky because five minus nine is negative four, and that's still positive. So that doesn't change our result. You get one fourth is greater than or equal to zero, but be careful. Don't do it as fast as I'm trying to do it because you'll throw in a negative where there shouldn't be a negative, okay? And I hope you caught that, and if you didn't, I, I, it's okay. So when I plug in the 10, same story, negative 10 plus four is negative six, but I don't plug in a negative 10 in the bottom. That's a positive 10 minus nine is a positive one. Now that's a negative number. Now is that negative number greater than or equal to zero? Well, no, because negatives are never greater than or equal to zero. So negative is what I would type in for my sign or select the negative option. But this is a false statement. Negative six is not greater than or equal to zero, so I do not shade this portion in. Now, when I look at my final answer, it's everything shaded and the filled in circles. So I include the four with a bracket all the way to nine, but nine has a parenthesis because nine came from a denominator. And that would be my final answer. I hope this helps you out. Hope you have a great day.